bit. And um, I see we're being recorded here. And so what I'm going to cover is really aligning outcomes with rubrics and assignments and, and really the benefit. So there's a couple of assumptions that Gail and I are making uh, going into this. And that's one that you've learned how to um, uh, use rubrics, uh, develop rubrics, create them in Canvas. That's the first assumption we're making. And why that's important is because the skill set that it, that it takes to make a rubric is the same skill set that you need, exactly the same skill set as you need to make an outcome in terms of the technical piece of it. There's a little more to outcome development, which would be a whole other lesson uh, if you're following the uh, domain of Bloom's uh, taxonomy in terms of the cognitive domain, and which is really where most of the outcomes are going to be based uh, on. So here you can see what I'm going to cover, and I'm going to go ahead and share my Browser, do you see my browser? Do you see my uh, course, Gail? No, I don't. You don't see my course? Okay. No, I do. Stop share and let me reshare so you see my screen. And here we go. So now you should be able to see my systems of belief plans, yeah? Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Got it. Okay, wonderful. Got it. Well, the first step, of course, uh, is I, I have... Um, Created, let me just move this just a little bit down because I wanted you to see the Bloom's taxonomy chart. Uh, do you see the chart here? Yes, the verb okay. chart. I, I can share uh, this chart with everybody. I'll drop it uh, during Gail's part in the chat room, the link. But essentially, these are um, verbs that you can use for Bloom's taxonomy in terms of creating your, um, your outcomes. Uh, and that is an art and a science, by the way. But I'm not going to go into great detail with that, but I wanted to show you at least that there are some resources that can help with that. The technical aspect of outcomes, of course, uh, in Canvas uh, would be following your, your course navigation menu. And I'm going to select outcomes here. And um, I've already created some outcomes, so uh, which I do is one of the very first things I do in my course, uh, Canvas courses, because Everything else I do, uh, for example, rubrics for assessing my assignments, I attach an outcome to as well. And that's part of what we're doing today. So what I have done is I use a, uh, a intercultural uh, knowledge rubric from Bennett. So I'm not developing my own rubric. I'm using one that's been supposedly validated so that the measurements are reliable. And so, uh, so for my class, I have developed these or borrowed from Bennett these outcomes. And let me see if it'll uh, pop up here. Waiting for my computer to catch up. Moment. Here we go. So as you can see, each outcome you develop in and of itself. I developed, I created a group here so that I could, uh, I could categorize my outcomes. I'm probably going to develop some research outcomes, too, because this is also an ethnography course uh, in part. But what I want to do for my assignments is make sure that the students um, are able to reach these outcomes, and I attach them to assignments, assignment rubrics. So here, I just, I, all I did was tweak my outcomes to make sure there was a verb that would be measurable. Uh, otherwise, the, the, uh, the rubric I'm using did not have apply or critique or demonstrate. I had to determine at what level of Bloom's taxonomy these would fit. And then, um, then I went ahead in these um, outcomes and I put the language of the rubric within. So creating the group, the folder is what I did here. Creating the outcome itself, if I created a new outcome from within this folder, you can see as I click on it, it allows me then to give the outcome a name and here's where I want to put my verb and also the nature of the outcome. And as I scroll down, it automatically has a rubric type of assessment measure here. It defaults to these particular categories in five points, uh, exceeds expectation, means expectation, and so forth. Now, while there are points assigned to these outcomes, you don't have to use these points to actually be part of the scoring when you attach them to a rubric for assessment. But these numbers here do show later 
um, in the grade book when you're when you're trying to determine mastery. So what happens with mastery is that these numbers follow what's called a decaying average. And the decaying average, they do the math, it does the math for you. Let me just move myself here. Um, and so what happens is the, the weight of the most recent assignment is given more um, um, weight than initial attempts at a given assignment where they're not quite meeting the mastery level. So if I start off as a student not doing well, then the better I get, the, the uh, better my scores will be in terms of, the, of reaching mastery. And so there's always a default mastery level here. You can make that call yourself and say mastery, in this case, it meets expectations at three, that's a default out of five points. You could say mastery could be lower or higher, depending on what you want to do. In this particular case, uh, for example, under demonstrate skills, I used a four point scale because that's what the original that I'm using from the American um, um, uh, colleges and universities uh, site. I'm using the language so that students can see what that means as if it's were a rubric, rubric and it gives a point. So it, still defaults at uh, mastery level three, but I could have changed that to three and a half, or I could have made it four, or I could have made the mastery level two. It depends on my expertise and my judgment as the instructor. So um, I wanted to just let you know that developing these outcomes is a little bit of art, a little bit of a science, um, mm. and the technical piece of it is simply, you know, whether you want to create a group of outcomes, or to start with outcomes and individual outcomes themselves. And those outcomes, again, are uh, really going to be dependent on you as the instructor to develop. Typically, you're going to have a syllabus and or course outline. The difference between the two is the syllabus at the University of Carter Word is a document that's been ratified and vetted through uh, a process from the school level through the university level, institutional level. And those syllabi, all of them have outcomes as part of that standard document, which are more general in nature. The outline is the adoption for faculty to say, I want to take those general outcomes, but I want to create sub outcomes maybe, and I want to create my own outline, using that as the, the sort of the foundation of the syllabus. And so you can then use outcomes. For example, that's what I did here. I took the original syllabus and I developed sub outcomes that meet the syllabus outcomes, but at the same time, I wanted to use an instrument that was uh, uh, vetted beyond the course syllabus. Now, that's a lot to swallow, but I just right. want to let you know that you don't have to really hunt for the general course outlines if you have your uh, the official syllabus in hand, um, or you use another's outcome uh, outcomes based on their outlines. So on the main campus, that should be afforded to you. In the, on the, um, in the School of Professional Studies, at the undergraduate level, you have common course outlines that may already have those outcomes predetermined for you as well. But that doesn't mean you can't add sub outcomes to that. So it's a question of how you want to measure the learning for your students. So I'm gonna stop here, that's a lot to cover. And so uh, again, the creating the technical aspect is the same as basically creating um, a rubric. So step one, in my opinion, is to always start with your outcomes before you do anything else in Canvas. And because everything else you do will, will somehow be attached to those outcomes. I'll give an example. The next step, of course, is to, um, is to go ahead and, and say, okay, do I know what my assignments are going to be in, a, in advance? And do I know how I'm going to assess those assignments? Now, Gail and I are big believers in using rubrics. So what I do is I leverage the power of Canvas and I go ahead and I create rubrics in advance. Again, same skill set, but the rubrics are really more of assessing the assignment. And you can combine then that rubric with, um, with the outcomes. And I'm, I'm going to demonstrate what I mean by that. So let's say I have a, a rubric here for an assignment that I want to attach to in my course. Well, I already know what my assignments are. So I have this, I'm sorry, I, I, that was attendance, not assignments, just a moment. Here's assignment. 
Um, I have my assignments already uh, pretty much figured out. So I go into the assignment link and I start to add assignments in my categories, my grouping categories here. This is my computer cooperates. Here we go. And I say, all right, I know what my assignments are in advance. And so one of my assignments happens to be um, annotation reports for weekly readings so that students can synthesize those, those reports. Well, I want to now, after I created my assignment, I want to uh, attach a rubric to that assignment. But before I do that, I want to make sure my rubric and my outcomes are aligned. So I'm going to walk you through that quickly. So here, I know what rubric I'm going to use for this particular assignment. And it's called a CI. It states, uh, ex um, uh, ex exemplify, I'm sorry, state, explain, exemplify, and illustrate. It's a critical thinking uh, tool. And it's basically something that, that I borrowed and modified for my assignments. So I have this particular rubric that I know I'm going to attach to that assignment. Here it is. They elaborate, exemplify, and illustrate. But I also, beyond measuring how well they did the assignment, I also want to assess the uh, and attach and align that assignment with my learning outcome. So before I do anything else and attach it to my assignment, I want to edit my rubric and now align it with my outcome, my learning outcome. So here on the bottom of the rubric in the edit mode, I can find my outcomes that I already created in advance. So now I'm going to look for an outcome. It will now take me to my outcome groups. And I have to determine which of these outcomes are part of that assessment that I'm using, which is really more about analyzing and uh, making sense and applying theory into their readings. So I want to say, OK, I want to use apply skills, nonverbal and verbal. That makes sense. I want to make sure that I'm not using the criteria for scoring, but I want to, I want to track them. So I'm going to import this particular um, outcome. Now, as you see, this outcome is part of this rubric. I want to say, OK, I need another outcome that I know is part of this. I know the critique is going to be part. I don't want it to be part of the scoring, but I want to track. I import it. Now I have two outcomes. I know there's going to be another one. I just happen to know it because I've been teaching this course for so long. Um, I want to say uh, knowledge of cultural self. I want to make sure so that's not it. I want to say this one here. I know this is going to be part of it. So I, again, I'm unchecking because if I leave this check, then the points will also be uh, aggregated into the rubric that you developed. So I don't want that to be the case. It's my preference. So I import that. Now, I not only can assess my, the assignment, but I also can track that assignment and where it fits in terms of how they're doing on a learning outcome. So I'm going to update my rubric. Okay. Now I have my rubric updated and assigned and aligned with learning outcomes. So now I'm good. Now, again, just to recap, I started with outcomes. I know what my assignments are. I went ahead and built my assignments after outcomes into Canvas. Then I developed my assessment strategies, which happen to be rubrics. Now I want to, and I've aligned my rubric now with outcome. You saw me do this just now. Now I want to attach the rubric and outcomes to an assignment. So now I go back to my assignments. And I remember that I'm going to use this for my annotation reports. I'm going to wait for my computer to populate here. Okay. And so this one, this assignment is already part of module one. So now I'm going to go into my assignment. And I'm going to edit. No, I'm, not, I'm sorry. I'm not going to edit. I need to just go down and I just select a rubric. So my assignment has already been developed. Okay. And now I know I built my rubric and I attached the outcomes that I want to measure along with that rubric to this particular assignment. And again, there'll be a series of similar assignments. And eventually the students are going to be able, or students and the instructor are going to be able to see how they're doing in terms of their overall learning mastery. So I'm going to attach my rubric. Gail, you you catch me if I'm going too long here. And when you when you add a rubric, it automatically defaults to this format here, some rubric, I delete that. And I'm going to find a rubric 
that I, that I just finished creating. Now the problem is, is all of your rubrics in other courses also uh, that you've taught will tend to aggregate. So you have to know your course name and course number. And up here, I know it's INDR 8330. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm sorry that that's uh, a little bit more complicated, but I happen to know it's this particular course and section. So while it's loading the rubrics, I know I'm going to have to look for the CI rubric. So it's going to be alphabetical. And I'm using my wife's computer, by the way, so it doesn't have as many resources as my work computer. So bear with me as I look for it. Hang tight. Just looking for my rubric. This takes a minute. There it is. So here's my CI rubric, okay? And so this is the one that I want to use, okay? And so I had to use the navigation bar to scroll down, select my rubric and use this rubric as it's the choice I'm making here. And now all of a sudden I have my rubric and um, I've got the learning outcomes attached to this as well. So that way, the, I can measure both how they did on the assignment and their learning mastery. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to end this by showing you one more thing that I think is important. As you start to accumulate and accrue these assignments and you're measuring the learning outcomes, what will happen is your grade book will be where all of that will, uh, can be measured and sort of tracked. So in the grade book, you can, you'll, you'll have a view, I, I, it'll automatically default to a view. And what I like to do is organize my view by module. So if I want to see module one, then module two, then module three. So as you can see, that's the case here. But I also want to view um, learning masteries. So I'm sorry, I'm going to hit gradebook and then learning masteries uh, right here. And what happens is once I start to grade students, I can switch the view to learning masteries. And what will happen is you will start to see all of these learning outcomes that I created and aligned with um, particular assignments. And then you'll see a color coding by student. Right now I haven't graded anybody yet, so you're not seeing anything. But there's, there's a color coding uh, by student and I could export that report and these color codes would turn into the number. Like if um, mastery was three, you'll see three and if the student reach four, you'll see four and so forth, if they if exceeded. So think of this as, uh, as the numeric, the color code for the number. So four, three, two, one, based on the, the um, particular uh, learning outcomes that I've had here. So I can certainly measure their learning outcomes. Ask to the student. So uh, the students, if I'm looking at this from, a, I'm gonna go back to grade view, uh, grade book view, just a moment. And if the students want to see their grades, um, not only can they see their grades, but they can see their learning mastery as well. So if I'm a given student, I'll just pick one, it doesn't matter. And I wanna look at my grades. Okay. Again, this is live data, but, but um, there had nothing to store. Well, the students can see the learn learning outcomes on the side, but they can also look at their grades or they can choose the tab, which demonstrates their learning mastery and the alignments of any assignment. So every assignment that I've attached to a given learning mastery, learning outcome, those assignments will show up. They just expand here. Right now you're not seeing anything because, right, because students haven't yet um, completed any assignments, but it will show you the exact assignment that was aligned with the assignments, plural, and it'll show you how the students did, and you'll see how, you'll see the actual rubrics uh, and the scoring of those rubrics. And so the students will see this as well in, in their own learning mastery view. So I'm going to stop for a second and see if you have a question before we go to Gail. That was a lot to digest here. So any questions? Can you see the question, Norman? I can't. No, I have one, one okay. screen. Here. Go um, ahead. Okay. Uh, I, I believe Michael Talon asks, do you know if students actually look at this information? 
do they tell you or can you check? Um, they, they, you, you can't really check if they're looking at it. You, there are analytics that you can use on your homepage to see how much activity. So I'm going to my homepage here. Okay. And on the homepage, you have um, analytics here. You can see how much activity. I'll, I'll click on new analytics just to show you. But, but you can't see, you can see that they viewed pages and so forth, but you can't see if they're, if they're viewing their own learning outcomes. That's a question, it's taking a second for the analytic um, screen to come up, um, but it, 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 it'll be a matter of you encouraging students to not only look at their grade, but to switch to the tab that says, how am I doing in my learning outcomes? So even if I'm, maybe, maybe I made a B on an assignment, right? And because the, there might be a nuance in the assignment, but, the, but the, in terms of how it aligns with learning outcome, how, did I, how am I doing there? And so, what you can see, you can see the analytic uh, popping up here. You can see what kind of activity they have, grades, report, and all these different reports, but it won't show you if they viewed their learning outcomes. Um, that's just something you have to encourage them to do. That's a great question. Uh, but I use it all the time. I'll tell you why. Because as the instructor, I can see if I have outliers, and I can tell, I can see if it's if it's the students are doing okay or if it's my instruction. So if I see a, 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 a overall um, not mastered, you know, a given outcome that's not being mastered, I'll look at those assignments that align, that's aligned with it, do an analysis, and I'll have to uh, switch gears. So it helps me to keep sort of in my lane. Uh, if if the over if I have an outlier or two, then that's probably the student having some issues. I can reach out to the student, but I want to know if my assignments are reaching the objective. Uh, for their learning and in each of the objective areas. And it, the nice thing is the alignments of the assignments. You can see what they are. Maybe I have to put a different assignment, in, uh, listen to their feedback, and then and then uh, sort of use that as a formative strategy to assess how I'm doing instruction. And, and please, I can't see any uh, back channel questions. So Gail, if, if there are any more, or if you just speak up, that would be great too. Sure, I'll let you know if anybody puts a question in. Okay. I think I've, I've got about maybe uh, six minutes left for my part, and then I'll give Gail the rest of the time. But I want to make sure I covered a lot of ground just now. And I want to make sure that the cadence and the logic of what I did makes sense to everybody. Start with outcomes. Build your assignments. Build your rubrics for those assignments. Don't attach them yet. Align your rubrics and your outcomes together. Then build your, uh, then align your rubrics with your assignment. Uh, and if you follow that strategy, that means that first you have to build the outcomes. Second, build your assignments. Thirdly, build your uh, rubrics. Uh, so put them together with the um, uh, with the uh, the outcomes at that point. Then align the rubric with the assignment itself. That's the key. And so if you follow that strategy, you'll save time. Uh, because if you build a rubric first and you assign it to the, uh, attach it to the assignment, and then you say, oh, wait a minute, I want to also track outcomes, you have to go back and it doubles the amount of work and time. So those are, those are my nuggets of wisdom here. So any questions? Do I need to cover anything else again before we move on to get? She's going to cover similar topics here, but only in the context of quizzes. Any questions? Okay. Okay. All right. Gail, I'm going to release my screen. All righty. Uh, absolutely. See can, let's see if I can bring up my screen okay. here. Well, this is always fun to figure out where I am with it. And I'm going to drop the Bloom's taxonomy chart okay. in the chat box for anybody, the link for anybody who wants it. And CTL also has the Bloom Taxonomy sliders. If anyone's interested, let me know and I'll send one to you through Wonderful. Campus Mail. All righty. Now I just have to find where all this is. This is the thing that I have the most trouble with is going around all of these. We have your screen, Gail. Okay, great. Now all I have to do is get into this because I can't see from what's up here. Can't get that down, come down. There we go. We can okay. see. There we go. 
All right, I had to I had to move this this silly these silly things all over the place. My old eyes don't work. Anyway, one thing I did want to just add real quick to what you were talking about, Norman, just kind of piggyback on it, is if you're working for SPS, you probably have to have what's called the Common Course Outline. And I don't have it, I can just show you the picture of it here. On the front page, they have what's called study topics. And if you open up to the second page, they have taken those study topics and turn them into what they call outcomes. Of course, you have to tweak it a little bit as we found out. And then they also tell you how you are supposed to be assessing those um, outcomes. So it makes it a little bit easier if you're teaching undergrad, which is what I'm teaching. Just wanted to let everybody know. Okay, um, thanks a whole lot, Norman, for showing us all of that. And now I'm going to use my um, fall two class to explain to you how to attach outcomes to either an entire quiz or just one question. There we go. Okay, Canvas gives you the option of two types of quizzes, either the new quizzes or the classic quizzes. And there's a huge difference between the two. We are going to be able to use classic quizzes until I believe about January, 2023 and then classic quizzes are going to disappear. We'll have to use new quizzes. So last night, Noah said, get familiar with new quizzes. They're, they're really wonderful. Anyway, let me go into quizzes and we can get started. In order to um, put your outcomes in, you first have to go into quizzes. And if you notice to the left of my quizzes, there's this rocket ship. If the rocket ship is just an outline, you know that it's a classic quiz. If it's filled in like this one, then you know that it is a new quiz. So I'm going to do the new quizzes first because aligning outcomes to a new quiz is a lot easier and it has much fewer steps than when you're trying to work with a classic quiz. So the first thing that I would do with this would be to click on the quiz, the new quiz, or make a new quiz. And down at the bottom, you'll see that there's this little thing that says build. When you click on that, Canvas is going to go into the edit mode automatically. You don't have to look for a, an edit button anymore. And up on the right corner, there's item banks. Item banks in new quizzes is the same as your question banks in the classic quiz. There's outcomes and there's also preview. And like in the classic quiz, if you click on preview, you can actually take that quiz to see what your students are seeing and how they would be doing. If I want to align an outcome to the entire quiz, I just have to click on this outcomes up here and it's going to bring up this box here. Click on this box and it brings up automatically the default is to bring up all of the outcomes that are in this particular course. Clicking on that is going to bring up, list them actually. And the neat thing about this new quizzes is it not only gives you the name, the short name, it also gives you the long name. So you have a real good idea of which one you want to use. Selecting all will actually will give you all of them to put into the quiz. And if you decide that maybe one or two you don't wanna use, you can either click them out up here on top, or you can go to the quiz, to the uh, outcome itself and click down here. So once you've decided which ones you want to use, then you click on the done button and your outcomes are automatically aligned with that particular quiz. Now, if you want to do just one question, you can either start with a question that you already have made up or make up a question. You're going to come to the same uh, uh, screen. If you want to use a question that has already been made, you have a 
variety of ways to come up with the outcomes. You can use your edit button, which is that little pencil. I guess it's got an eraser on it for we who make lots of mistakes. You can hit the plus button. You can hit the one button. You can hit almost anything. If you hit anything in that question box, you're going to come up with this big box here. You look down and here's where you can align to your outcomes. Clicking on the outcomes brings you to the same box that you saw with it that if you wanted to align an outcome to the quiz, to the whole quiz, it brings you to the same field, but you are only aligning that particular outcome to one question. Now there's another neat thing about this, the new quizzes is up on top here. You don't have to go looking for these things the way we did in, in Blackboard. Here's your settings, shows you exactly what the, the time that you wanna use, if you wanna shuffle questions and so on. Moderate will tell you if you want to give a student more time or uh, more chances. And this neat thing reports is going to let you make a report um, on all of the outcomes that have been used for that quiz just by clicking on it. I don't have any outcomes in that uh, particular quiz, so it's not gonna show anything, but you don't have to go to another page. <coughs> Aligning outcomes in classic quizzes is a little bit more of a problem because for an outcome to be aligned to a classic quiz, the quiz will first need a question bank setup. Each question bank can have multiple outcomes aligned to it, and it is possible to have multiple question banks within a single Canvas quiz. So. To do that, if you want to make a question bank, you go into your quiz, go into the edit button, and down at the very bottom of the page, and I'm sorry, I have to go into my edit button, the question button, down at the very bottom of the page, you can write up a question group. You all know, do you, do you all know what a question group is? is where you can tell the program to choose one or more of the questions that are in that group so that each student will be getting a slightly different version of the test. Okay, let me go back to my quizzes now and show you the easy way to get into your question bank because that is where you will put in your outcomes. On the page that has all of your assignment quizzes, the snowman over here, if you click on that, the first thing, the, well, the first thing you can choose is manage question banks. That will bring up all of your question banks. The way that you can get into adding an outcome is you click on the question bank, you want to align the outcome to, and over on the right here, there's a, a thing that you can click on to align outcomes. That will bring up a list of all of your outcomes that you have for your particular course. By clicking on the outcome and hitting imp clicking on import, it will align that outcome to that particular question bank. Are there any questions so far? Okay. So let me go back to quizzes and tell you that there's one problem with these classic quizzes and that is trying to get an outcome to align to the entire quiz because there's no way to do it easily. So what Norman and I came up with is if you go into your rubrics, 
I'm going to add a rubric to this. And when you're building your rubric, one of the things that you can do is you can find an outcome to align to that rubric. So I'm going to click on my outline, my outcomes, and I'm going to import an outcome to the rubric. And up here where we have the criterion that we, you'd use to build your rubric, I'm going to get rid of it. Now, all I have is just the outcome. And I'm going to name it. And what I did was I made the name quiz rubric for this. And then I just click on it. And now I have another quiz rubric. Then when I go into my quizzes, well, all righty. If I go click on the quiz, let me see, it. is it here? Yep. When I open up the quiz, if I click on my little snowman up here on the right, and no, it's in, excuse me, it's in edit. This is what you get when you, you write everything out that you wanna say and then you just skip around. Okay, so in this one, if you hit the edit button, you get into where it says show rubric, and then you can align your rubric with your quiz. Now, the one really bad thing about this is that you will have to grade that outcome yourself because Canvas is going to read it as a rubric, which needs to be graded by the instructor. The outcomes, it grades itself. The grade that you give for the outcome will go into the grade book and the outcomes, the learning mastery but it will not do it automatically. So one of the things that I found out with the outcomes, if you go into the outcome page and you click on one of your, one of the outcomes, this, come, this page comes up, clicking on the red that's written on it. If you click on that, you're going to see everything place that you have aligned that particular um, outcome to. In this case, I had only aligned it to one essay question. Some of them I think I've aligned to quite a few, you can see. See, it, it tells you each one. If you click on one of these, what's going to happen is it will open it up and show you exactly where that outcome has been used. When you are grading a, a quiz, or not grading, but when you're setting up your quiz, in your edit, you can make up the questions and edit your questions. There's also this thing called mastery paths. And mastery paths are a great tool if the course you're teaching builds on a set of skills like a math course where you want students to be able to maybe multiply before they get into integration or something. Um, you can re um, redirect a student to another set of either assignments or questions or reading to help them through this mastery of this particular skill. The only problem is that mastery paths does not support association with outcomes yet, even though they're using the same wording in, in a lot of cases. You would have to set up your mastery paths in your modules and have, you would have to do that kind of um, individually. When you are looking at the grade book and you're looking at your, um, like Norm showed you, you can go from, the grade, come up with the grade book and go into your learning mastery, it shows you 
all of your outcomes and how your students are doing with the outcomes. Canvas will use your mastery level when it enters the result into the learning mastery grade book. So just remember that if you have used a three or a four or a two in the mastery level, that's what Canvas is going to put in there. Now, if you want to change one of your classic quizzes into the new quiz format, it's a very simple process. All you do is you click on the three snowmen that are over here on the right and come down to migrate. You hit that and it's going to migrate that particular test or quiz into the new format. The only problem is, if you noticed with my week two quiz, everything was built around question banks. So when it pulls it in, it pulls it in looking very nice. And then it gives me this lovely mess. None of the questions are, are there. And the problem is, is that there's no easy way to migrate all of those question banks from the classic quizzes into the item bank, which is this here in the new quizzes. So be aware of that if you try to pull or if you try to migrate one of your quizzes into the new quiz. Um, I think I've covered pretty much everything that I wanted to cover. Um, are there any questions? Norm, did you want to add no. anything to this? Yeah, because, you know, part of what's missing here is a workshop, right? So uh, ideally, we would have two hours where we could sit, show you the didactic piece, and then say, let's do it. You know, let's do a sample quiz. Let's do a sample assignment. Let's do, you know, let's go through the process. Um, you know, I might be able to, to uh, convince uh, Susan Hall and Kathy at some, at some future date where we can do that because the bigger question is more philosophical in nature. Do you see efficacy in building uh, and tracking and building alignments um, uh, with your outcomes so that you can measure your outcomes, uh, the students can measure their outcomes beyond just the assignment grade? And that, that is a bigger question. Um, so that maybe you can see today more is here are the possibilities rather than let's remember all of this. I realize that today's going to be recorded, but at the same time, I think the, the recording will have the same effect. You have a lot of information. Here's the scope. Here are the possibilities. So let's have maybe a quick conversation about that. Um, how many of you, uh, how many of you, I'm reading the uh, um, comment here too. Uh, making the quizzes and the quiz. Yeah, it's, I agree, Helen. Um, that way, that way, you're not having to, to go back and fix anything. But any any thoughts um, in terms of today? Maybe we're going to present again um, on the 27th, I believe. And so, what what um, Gail and I are trying to do is not be too high level. You know, we're trying to meet you where you are, but we don't know where all of you are. Right? We're not a regular group meeting on a regular basis. So. A, is today something that's beneficial to you? And B, what would you like to see if you came to a second um, presentation? Do uh, less or more or make space for a workshop, uh, at least a simple workshop? What, what do you all think? Make space for a simple workshop. Okay. So we can actually do it. Again, I, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Right. Okay, uh, Helen, you were about to say something. Yeah, I agree with Patsy that a workshop so that we can actually, you know, try to click the buttons ourselves. Now, now that I know that this is possible, which is great. I didn't know that before. So. Yeah, yeah, and and it really has, um, really, is an instructional tool. It's where I see its benefit. Students look at it, yes. And to Michael's question, um, will they look at it if you encourage them? Yes, um, because you want them to think beyond the grade. You know, am I learning something? You can still learn if you get a B. 
you know, uh, A is for excellent. You know, the standards is usually at the B level, depending on your philosophical position on grading. But it's really a question of, uh, yeah, thank you, Michael. Um, uh, he's saying it's a good introduction to the topic. I think probably seeing today that is that is that way. The question is uh, for the next time for Gail and myself, um, would you all be the same people to come, right? Because it'll be a first time for others, maybe. And so maybe that's something for you all to consider. Uh, Gail and I will probably talk again and maybe even ask if we could have an extra 30 minutes or so for that workshop so that you can get a, a little taste of quizzes, a little taste of assignments and how all of the, uh, and how rubrics and outcomes and all of that, all of those assessment tools um, come together in a, in a more practical way. Because, you know, it's, it's the old let me do it and I'll remember thing. You know, you've got to, you've got to use it. Um, uh, let's see, I'm looking... Yeah, uh, so Kathy pops some. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of support, you know, um, and then Terry Peak will be available. So thank you for that, uh, Kathy. So you have have that. And I'm also, and I, I know Gail, I've, I've been working with Gail for quite a while. We're also willing to work with you one on one. So if, if you're will, if you want to work with quizzes, work with Gail. Um, because I, I, I teach doctoral level and I don't use quizzes in my classes. I use more of, uh, you know, reports and essays and that kind of thing. Um, but if you want to learn how to build outcomes, how to build rubrics, how to align them, and how to attach them to uh, bigger assignments, I'm your guy, and I'm happy to do that. So, so that's something for you to consider. Uh, any other thoughts, uh, Melissa, um, uh, Michael? Are you still there? I don't see you. So, anybody want to add any thoughts or suggestions? It's good to know who to go to for these things. That's sure. very yeah. helpful. Yeah. Susan cautions me often not to go too too advanced, and that that's where I tend to <laughs> uh, because I understand. You know, it, it's we all understand when we're teaching. You know, if we're teaching our content. We have PhDs in our content, and then we're we're trying to teach a more basic uh, version of that. You know, that can be problematic if we're if we're thinking higher level, and and so um, so that's something to consider as well. Um, but you know, both. Both of us are Canvas mentors, so we can probably help you with most of your problems. In addition to the resource that your university has with Noah and Terry and so forth, um, those and they're wonderful at this. And you know what was nice? If they don't know, oftentimes Gail and I will stump them too. We'll come up with questions that they can't answer. It's let's figure this out. And so there, there have been many times where we've done that together, where the faculty are pushing the envelope a little bit, and that's what Gail's doing with quizzes. But we can, you know, we can ask questions, and and all of that helps to improve the, the um, all of the base of expertise that we have at the university. I just want to throw that out there because I realize we covered a lot of ground today, and so I'm going to do my best uh, to see if if uh, Kathy and Susan and and and, uh, uh, and both Kathy's Kathy's uh, squared are amenable to a little more time, attaching a little more time for a workshop. And we'll make it a basic workshop. Maybe quizzes might be a little bit much because of all the nuances that, that Gail was showing. Um, uh, but we can certainly do something simple. And, and I can do the same. And then we just work on it together. Maybe do breakout rooms. Have one breakout room for quizzes, one breakout room for just general assignments and that kind of thing. So um, if, if you all think that's a good plan, and you plan on coming back. Because I think that's the rest of the story for you, getting hands on. So that's all I have, Gail. Gail, are you there? I don't see anybody else in the room. I, I mean, except for uh, Adela, Kathy, Melissa, Helen, and Patsy and Rick. Hey, hey Norman, I had a quick question here. Is there a way, um, just kind of maybe one of the breakout rooms ideas, just something that could be more efficient uh, when it comes to um, building out the, the rubrics and um, and all of the um, learning mastery. So something simple, but can be applied to maybe each of the classes just to kind of start getting used to the, um, you know, tying those items together to the assignments because looking at yours, it's very complex. And, you know, I'm kind of baby step into, into rubrics. And then also now I'm like, okay, now I got like, there's like, layers upon layer upon yeah. layers and it just kind of blows your mind where it's just kind of like where's like the 
maybe we could start with like the simplest kind of level saying, okay, yeah. here's learning mastery, A, B, C, D, here's rate rubric, you know, X, Y, Z, tying these guys together. And that yeah. could be applied to everything. What do we all have in common? We have writing in common, right? right. So mm -hmm. one idea could be that, um, that we have a rubric for writing that we could all share, by the way, those rubrics aren't proprietary for any class. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and, and, so I, I think we already have a few in the commons area. So let's find a rubric, you know, and then we could replicate that, maybe build it, build, build another dimension onto it. Just, yeah. just to have that experience. And then do the same with a couple of outcomes that are related to writing. And so that way we are finding a common ground. So no matter what we're teaching content wise, we all have writing in common and that may be a smart way to go. And then you can build on that common base instead of something complex. I agree with you. Um, we have lots of different templates in CTL for rubrics in all yeah. different subjects. Yep. Yeah. So let's let's but do there's almost there's almost too much. There's almost too much. So it's <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't did. know which one it took. So I think yeah. writing, if we could start. Yeah, let's do that. We'll pick one, writing. And and we'll pick up, you know, that because uh, we all basically look for the same oh skill sets or outcomes when, when students are writing something at a college level, you know, undergrad, even graduate level. By the way, sometimes it's not that much. Um, Rick, what do you teach? Yeah. What do you teach, Rick? Uh, right now I'm doing conflict uh, uh, resolution for leadership and also organizational change. So kind of tying all those learning. together. What's that? Who moved my cheese? Mm, yeah. So, my, so my undergrad is organizational development. That's my favorite book. There you go. Yeah. Gail, we had a we had an epiphany, we think, or a stroke. I don't know which we had. Um, that uh, Rick had said had mentioned that we need to pare it down a little bit. So I suggested writing. We all we all have a writing component in all of our courses, and so to, to to work off of a rubric that everyone can relate to and even use in their, their classes. Kathy said there are plenty of templates that we can borrow from. So maybe in a workshop, we can we can build. Uh, the rubric for writing and um, or, or use the rubric for writing that's already built uh, because that building a rubric can be its own session. But then then also uh, common outcomes that you would have expectations for in terms of those writing assignments. Mm -hmm. So we're all building from some common place. Um, and then from there, uh, those skill sets can sort of layer because I would argue that this is also like you were saying with mathematics a building block skill set. Mm -hmm. Norm, Susan is working on the schedule for the next semester for CTL. Okay. So if you and or Gail would like to put something on, let us know and we'll add you to our schedule. Yeah, I think so. And, and uh, Gail, I had recommended more uh, breakout rooms. So mm -hmm. Gail and I are great partners and we like to collaborate and we're a little bit yeah. too type A in our, in our preparations. So what we could do is collaborate a workshop writing, you know, focused on the, a writing rubric and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then you all can come to that and just apply your skills, have a little learning, uh, uh, experiential learning. And so, I, uh, Rick, I like your suggestion a lot in terms of keeping it something more basic. I agree with you. I agree with you. And again, I, I, I defer to Susan, who says we tend to be a little more advanced than we should be for these sessions. Um, but again, this is a good introduction, as Michael. Uh, his suggestion. And I apologize, Norman. I got kicked off the internet for a, quite a while there, and I was having trouble getting back on again. I don't know if it was from my end or your end or whose end it was, but oh, I was Kathy. just off. Kathy may remove it. <laughs> yeah. Um, IT. So, just blame okay. me, Ed. You know, I have a question for you. When you migrated the classic quiz to the new quiz, Mm -hmm. uh, I saw on your screen, nothing showed up. So you have to start over and put those questions in again. Is that what happened? Patsy, what happened was when I migrated over a classic quiz that was built with uh, question banks, each one okay. of my quiz questions came from a question bank. The new quiz does not accept the question banks from classic quiz, not yet. Okay. So it comes across and it says, well, you're drawing from a question bank that doesn't exist. So that was why I got that horrible screen. If I just had a regular classic quiz that just had questions, 
not using a question bank, but just plain quit questions. That, that transfers over beautifully. Okay. No okay. problem okay. at all. I see what not you're saying. All. Thank you. Thank you for the explanation. Okay. Classic, classic quizzes are going away, right? Yeah, they right. are. Mm -hmm. so, but okay. um, Noah has been working on a way to, to import the question banks into uh, the new quizzes. And it's a little bit of a, a drawn out fair. They, they're, they've got to figure something out, Patsy, because you cannot have all of these quizzes built and all of these question banks built and then get rid of the whole thing and tell them to use tell, them. You know, mm -hmm. you know, instructors uh, say, la vie, do whatever it is that you can do now. You know, um, Canvas is going to have to figure something out and work on it. Right now, they just they just don't talk. Your question Thank banks you. do not talk to you. We're going to give you all one right now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, Kathy, can I ask you, are you suggesting that we have a workshop in the fall? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, may we? have a workshop at our, you know, part of that time we have on the 27th as well. Would that be okay? Absolutely. What I'll do is I'll record that session as well. And that way we'll have both of them, but yes. Okay, and then we can record in the uh, actual breakout rooms too, and then make sure you all have access to that as well. Beautiful. Okay, good. good. That's great. Thank you both so much yeah, for today. Sure. Thank you. I, I hope, hopefully you won't need a Tylenol or an Advil after this session. <laughs> Not me. Uh, I know we'll have to get together. <laughs> my email is in the chat box here. And, uh, and Gail, if you want to offer yours as well, please reach out to us, okay? Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm a, I'm a trained monkey, but I think I've been trained pretty well. So yes, that I can yeah. help you with. Norm, Norm's real good at, at coaching and going into a little bit of the um, esoteric type stuff. But I can tell you what buttons to push and, and where to find those buttons. Great. Thank you both so much. Everybody have a wonderful weekend. Be safe. Oh, definitely. Stay safe. Okay. See you next week. Wear your masks. <laughs>